Welcome to the Dayton Superior Learning Center. This session, we will discuss the use and application of insulated wall panel tie connectors, the Delta tie. Once again, thank you for your time. This presentation is intended for training purposes only for technical specifications for the products mentioned in this training. Refer to www.daytonsuperior.com. Today, we're going to talk about the Delta Tie concrete panel connector, uh, used primarily for insulated wall panels. A couple of things we have to cover over first to glossary of terms. A uh, sandwich panel. What is the sandwich panel? A uh, sandwich panel is an insulated concrete panel, commonly referred to as a, as a sandwich panel because of the layers of insulation is sandwiched between an inner layer and an outer layer of concrete. Materials are all this all held together by some means of a mechanical connection. A wife. Typically, you have a uh, layer, it's basically one layer of an insulated wall panel. So, typically, we have three wipes we have a uh, facial wipe, a structural wipe, and an insulation wipe. So, the facial wipe obviously is the exterior face of the concrete panel, typically cast down against the building floor slab. Or your insulate or, make, or your uh, precast concrete form. The facial wipe is sometimes called the architectural wipe because that's where most of your uh, facade uh, reveals, et cetera, are all going to be uh, for your basically to give your building some description. Uh, within the uh, markings of the concrete. Your structural white. It's the interior face of the concrete, interior uh, face of the concrete. Typically, this is going to be where your lifting inserts and your lifting inserts are going to be your bracing inserts. You're going to lift from the structural white and the structural wife will have some sort of connection going through the insulation to the facial wife to hold everything together. Here you can see this is structural, fascia, and insulation. Typically, the facial wife is often many times a lot thinner. Typically, two or three inches are usually the tops. They're most average, most common sizes. Uh, insulation can be everything from two inches to eight inches, or actually one inches, one inch to eight inch of insulation. And a structural wife can be whatever the contractor deems or the architect will deem necessary. So a lot of times what they do is they will actually give a uh, panel a denotation of two, 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 three, two, three. Uh, indicating the facial wife, insulation, structural wife. One of the most common sizes that you typically will see is a seven and a quarter, two, three. Seven and a quarter for the structural wife, two inches for the insulation, and three inches for the facial wife. Insulation, key component. Basically, insulation contributes to about 98% of the panel's R value. Concrete is a pretty porous material. Uh, and usually, it's not all that great in as far as holding heat or cold in on its own. So typically, you're going to need, the re you need insulation to actually uh, enhance that property. Uh, Typically, you're going to have some type of a, a board put in place. You've got three various flavors here, and flavors I'll refer to as you've got the uh, polystyrene, expanded polystyrene. 
you have an extruded expanded polystyrene, and you have a polyurethane or and polyisoanurate. Uh, all three of these products here are more commonly known as your styrofoam, which is either your pink board or your blue board. Sometimes it's green or yellow or any other color in the rainbow. Uh, your polyisoanurate is typically a brownish color, brownish yellow color, and usually will have a foam backing on it. A lot of times you'll see this used in the roofing material uh, on most of these tilt-up tilt construction projects. And then we have the expanded polystyrene. Uh, typically, remember the old uh, styrofoam uh, coffee cup? It was a little bunch of made up of a bunch of beads of insulation that was molded into the shape of a cup. Well, that's an expanded polystyrene. Why are we using insulation? What is the purpose of it all? Well, we're trying to stop thermal bridging. Thermal bridging is the transfer of heat from one element to another through a dense material. Uh, Transfer depends on the thermal properties of the connection. For example, steel is almost 100 times more conductive than plastics. Uh, any location where there is thermal bridging occurs will result in cold spots. Uh, as you can see in the photo here, these drawings typically here uh, is an older structure uh, where they used to use almost what looked like in back in the day was an old soup can that they punched, took the top off and took the bottom off of it and punched holes through it and then had that connect in between the insulation in between the walls. And that, that soup can actually made the connectivity between the fascia wife and the structure wife. Problem is because it was steel, it would conduct cold and heat, it would allow cold and heat to run back and forth between whether there was a cold side or the warm side. So here you're looking at a uh, insulated building, warm weather outside, cold air coming through, hitting the concrete and creating condensation on the outside of the building. What's even worse is if it, you flip that around and you get the heat on the uh, inside of the cold on the outside of the building travels through the insulated tie and into the structural panel. What will happen is that will generate a condensation, which in the meantime can gather on the floors or in the concrete, et cetera, and usually will yield to or will yield uh, a mold spore, which then you'll end up having black mold, which typically is not a good thing in the building world. So thermal bridging basically causes the stops using the steel connectors. So what happened, as you can see, even the cars here are, are denoted. Uh, this drawing actually took place here back in the 70s and 80, early 80s. Um, the fire use of plastics and fiberglass uh, rods finally came into play somewhere in the late 1980s, early 1990s for construction. Uh, originally, most companies developed a pin method, uh, which basically connected the insulation to the two Ys. Uh, we went a little bit farther than that. We decided that we needed something a little more robust, a little bit easier for the contractor to install. So in the mid 1990s, we developed a product called the Delta Tie. It's a two dimensional truss of uh, structurally non-conductive, non-corrosive fiber, composite used as a Weiss connector for concrete insulated panel construction. The P24 is used for anywhere from one inch to four inch. And the XL version, which is a little bit different version, a little bit bigger version, is used for one inch to eight inch insulation. 
benefits from the delta tie. There's zero thermal bridging. Uh, provides composite or non-composite action. No effect from ultraviolet light. User determines the insulation type, so we do not have to go out and we are not trying to sell insulation. The dealer can turn around and recommend whatever insulation he has sitting in his yard. Uh, lower panel costs and obviously unmatched spacing fewer ties per panel. As we mentioned, we have two sizes. Uh, the standard delta tie is five by seven. Accommodates up to insulation up to four inches. Typically there's a requirement that you have to have an inch and a half of delta tie embedded in each concrete layer. So in the structural wise, you have to have an inch and a half embedment. In the facial wise, you have to have a minimum inch and a half embedment. So the, the, the standard sizes will handle a two inch piece. If you rotate it 90 degrees, it'll handle a three inch and four inch insulation. Anything bigger from basically the four inch to eight inch, you're gonna go to the uh, P24XL version. Uh, the four inch and larger, typically you're gonna find on ins uh, insulated freezer buildings. Here's the denotation. We said we had to have a minimum of an inch and a half embedment in both fascia and structural wise. The installation of the process is relatively simple. You're going to have your insulation already cut the size that, and width that you're going to need because uh, most of these jobs here is you, you won't have time. These are a very fast track project once you get started with them. So typically you're going to come in, you're going to pour your fascia white concrete, uh, hit it with the jitterbug to actually vibrate it and to put position place and then start laying your insulation. Here you start laying your insulation in place here. They put the outside layers in first and then do the interior layers. Here's where we're coming back with the jitterbug on it to make sure that we get how we get started. Now, when you put your insulation in, you're gonna start with the outside. You're gonna have your first piece already cut to whatever you have to have. Typically it's gonna run anywhere from four to 12 inches, somewhere in that gap. Everything else on the insulation is going to be two foot wide. So you're going to have two foot by eight foot strips of, insula of insulation that you're going to be putting down. Uh, once you get all your insulation in place, you're going to come back and start placing your delta ties and you're going to muck them in in the joints between the sheets of the insulation. The insulation gets, uh, the, excuse me, the delta tie will get mucked in. Like I said, leaving approximately an inch and a half of material protruding out through the top of the insulation. <clears throat> the insulation here uh, gets mucked in relatively quick. You're gonna have a couple of people working on it. It goes in, it goes very fast track. Your spacing is typically two foot wide by four foot in, uh, uh, in height on the on the panel. So at every seam, if you're if you're using two foot wide panel of insulation, every four foot and overall length, you're going to have a delta tie. The delta tie will go in uh, depending on how they're actually putting it in place. So here you can see they put a work bridge across the top. So they can make sure they get the delta tie in place here without uh, disrupting any of the other ties in place. Spacing on the delta ties here based off a two foot wide uh, description of two foot by four foot. So it means every eight square feet, you're gonna have a tie that is the most common uh, spacing that we have. 
We can also, they can also do a four foot by two foot spacing, which is typically, you know, full size four foot wide sheets uh, with a delta tie every two foot on the height end of the uh, delta tie, on the height end of the installation. For inspection process, it's relatively quick and easy. Once the delta tie is in and the concrete has had, a, had time to cure out, you come back through and check all of the uh, uh, delta ties with a hook. Basically, it looks like a fish, a fish scale uh, with a little hook on the end that would go in underneath the delta tie. You just pull it up to make sure you reach a uh, the uh, embed strength. And if you shouldn't reach the embed strength, which is uh, very uncommon because most of the guys here uh, find that they are working with a, a good plasticized concrete. So you're going to have enough uh, uh, plasticity in the concrete that will allow it to actually move and, and resettle in and around the delta tie to guarantee you're going to end up getting uh, engagement with the wall panel. But if you shouldn't get that, what you can typically do is for repair. If you come back, you expose the uh, styrofoam, cut the insulation in and around the delta tie. So you're exposing the delta tie. Uh, pull off the insulation, take a grinder and cut the delta tie off flush with the concrete. Where the delta tie was supposed to be, you're going to then take that same grinder with the grinding wheel and cut a slot in the concrete in the fascia white. Once you cut the face in the uh, fascia white, you're going to insert a new delta tie, an inch and a half in, embedded into it, and use a J58 epoxy. Uh, this has a very low viscosity material, will run uh, forever, so you don't need to use a whole lot of it. Um, it typically will slide into, basically uh, flow into all the nicks and crannies and everything, so you don't have to worry that if your, uh, your uh, saw cut is a little bigger or a little bit oblong or whatever, uh, this material will take up any of that uh, and it will flow into in everywhere. So, and, third, and then you're going to basically install the new delta tie, put the insulation back over the top, back in where it belonged, where you cut it out from, and then place your rebar on top. Uh, Placing the uh, rebar on top of the insulation, I always recommend using a, a chair with a sand base. Uh, this has a wide base. You do not want to use the delta tie as a bar support. Once the concrete uh, brace, uh, once the rebar is put in place, you're going to have pour the rest of the concrete, strike it off, screw. Strike it off, and then you're going to hit it with a, uh, a screed to screed off the backside of the panel, then put a curing compound on it, allow the material to cure. Typically, what we're looking at delta ties for versus the major competitor in this marketplace. Uh, they use the pin system that typically you have to put a pin of uh, every 16 inches. And when I talk about a pin, it's about the size of a, of a writing pen. Uh, it basically uh, half inch in diameter and you have to buy their insulation. And when you install these pins, you're talking for a 14 by 30 pin, you're gonna put 237 pins in that panel. Where with the delta tie, you're going to actually, in, in an eight square foot arrangement, you're going to use the grand total of 56 delta ties. So you're going to have about 76% fewer pieces to install. Now let's talk about composite action. 
composite mm -hmm. action here with the delta tau, as you can see, composite action is uh, the action that occurs when the fascia wise is reinforced and sufficiently tied to the structural wise. So basically, mm -hmm. the composite action is when you pick the product up that you're picking from the structural wise, the facial wise will follow. So in that type of a advantages of the composite action, uh, basically helps the panel during when you're picking because of deflection. Uh, it actually enables you to have a thinner concrete uh, uh, wife. Uh, you can increase the sandwich panel, the strength of the panel because of that. Uh, you're going to reduce the panel thickness and you're going to have a lighter panel altogether. Physical characteristics of this, uh, you've got uh, test reporting done by Wish Jenny Elsner, uh, a major refu reputable firm up out of Iowa. Uh, typically test reports, we have tension reports here uh, that the Delta Tai averages about 3,100 pounds in tension, which means roughly we have about a six to one safety factor. On shear, uh, shear was what we called non-composite action, where we have to worry about the shear, where the face is just not working in together, but basically working against each other. And the shear end of it, we was during the lifting process and actually placing, and once you put the building panel in place, uh, you have to worry about a non-composite uh, action. And you've got basically an 11 to 1 safety factor on that uh, uh, connection in shear. So you don't have to worry about the fascia panel just sliding down and popping off the, off the wall. Test reports. Uh, in 2012, Wish Jenny Elsner did a uh, fire rated test for us on the Delta tie. Uh, we did pass the four-hour fire rating test in accordance with ASTM and NFPA uh, with a five-inch structural width uh, for, for fire conditions. At Dayton Superior, we have design software to help you design your uh, position with how many delta ties you're going to need for the panel and help with the positioning of the tie can help you determine what panel uh, schematic works for you, whether it's a two by four or four by two spacing. We also have design software within this in our panel books that uh, if you're doing a tilt up project here, uh, we can actually provide uh, spacing within the panel books uh, and location for the all the panels that you're going to have that will be insulated where the delta ties need to be. Uh, typically embedment needs to be an inch and a half, as we said before, that's imperative. Uh, install the sheets of insulation so the gaps are no more than an eighth of an inch. You don't want to have any more gaps bigger than an eighth of an inch as that will, because you're looking to minimize the gaps between the sheets and the foam because that is where you end up getting some bridging will occur. So as with any connector tie, it is important to protect the fresh concrete from rain during installation. Obviously, uh, it's one of the things, anytime you pour fresh concrete, you have to protect the surface from the uh, concrete. Uh, from the rain because it will actually increase the water cement ratio, uh, which basically will lead to a weaker design in the concrete. Uh, if rain is expected after the concrete has reached the specified set, uh, set strength, uh, anti-float anchors are available so you can actually install them on the uh, on the insulation so you don't have to worry about it if you're going to get a 
lot of rain that it will actually pick the insulation up and basically float it out of position. So you can get a uh, anti-flow pin, which basically is the push down pin, which actually will uh, engage itself into the fascia wife and just right through the insulation, just pops itself right in. Uh, the only purpose for this is to actually help to hold the insulation. Typically when you're looking at like a two by eight panels, you're talking about two or three of them usually per sheet to help hold them down. Sometimes as many as five per sheet will may be required, but usually it's going to be somewhere in the range of anywhere from, I've seen guys everything from two to four pieces per panel, two by eight sheet. For any other questions, please feel free to uh, just make a quick phone call to uh, DaytonSuperior.com. We'll actually uh, be, be more than uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Typically, when you're looking at the re, you know the advantages with the, the Delta tie, uh, it's non-metallic, so you have no thermal bridging, material savings. Uh, and labor savings for the install. Design software available, applicable to all brands of insulation. Uh, so we don't have, we aren't tied into any specific brand, blue board, pink board, et cetera. Uh, can be used for composite action. Uh, you can actually reduce the thickness of the concrete because of the uh, uh, composite action. Quick installation, and obviously Dayton Superior as a recognized name and uh, we had a lot of value added to that. There's a lot of people and a lot of good products right behind this. Engineering services that are available through Dayton for bridge deck forming, tilt up uh, panel embeds, any precast embed locations, uh, application specialists and accessories, chemicals, epoxies forming, uh, are readily available. The 1,500 years of engineering experience with professional engineers in all 50 states. Uh, experts at custom made to order solutions. Typically, uh, engineering case studies, you see uh, different facilities here. Uh, this was a uh, FEMA uh, facility that we actually constructed in, in uh, Florida for training cadaver dogs uh, for in case of a natural disaster. Uh, this is a structure that uh, looks like it, an earthquake is hit. So they had multiple structures that actually were collapsed in. All these pieces are actually designed to look right where they're at and how, how it basically fits there is 100% safe. Uh, but the uh, structure itself was to replicate that what would happen after an earthquake. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at DaytonSuperior.com or contact my personal email address at ChuckCoke at DaytonSuperior.com. Thank you.